Peyton Manning said he hasn't heard from the New York Jets. He was golfing with Tiger Woods at the Memorial Pro-Am in Ohio on Wednesday. And Mark Cannizzaro, the New York Post, reports that mate Peyton Manning said that nobody from the Jets ever contacted me, and I'm not sure I was qualified anyway. Now, look, the self-deprecation. Pey- Peyton, you are qualified. Let- let's just dispense with that right away. You are qualified to be the general manager of the New York Jets. The question is, what actually was done to gauge his interest? Because... It never gets to the point, Chris, that the Jets directly contact him if they know he's not interested. And there are easy ways to take the back channel and find out whether or not he's in play. Two phone calls is all it takes, and you know whether or not Peyton Manning is worth pursuing. So if Manning's position from the get-go was, no, this isn't something I want, of course they're they're never going to directly contact him. That's not the question. The real question is, did anyone reach out to you quietly, discreetly, secretly behind the scenes to find out whether or not you were interested? And I don't know whether or not that happened. All I know is the league was buzzing that the Jets wanted Peyton Manning. What that ultimately became from that point, I don't know. But clearly it never led to the point where, at least to date, they've called Peyton Manning and said, we'd like you to interview for the job. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't doubt that his name was maybe thrown around the New York Jets front office or Chris jo- Christopher Johnson brought his name up just as far as tossing around people that might be, you know, worthwhile to fill the position. But I don't think, you know, at least from the people I've talked to, and I know, I know, I don't think it ever got serious and, and serious enough to where, yeah, they felt like even a phone call to Peyton Manning, you know, was even warranted at that point because uh, I think they had figured out that he was not even close to, you know, accepting any kind of job like that. And I think, yeah, you said it, Peyton Manning, he is qualified to be a GM or run a football team. But I think what he's saying too in that comment when he says, I don't know if I am qualified right now and being self deprecating which is, you know, a nice look for him. And the fact is, you know, he he's not – we know Peyton Manning. He's the ultra-prepared. And it seems like, hey, he's just being Peyton Manning right now, playing golf, showing up, you know, being a celebrity, being a legend. That's what he is. He's a legend. And I think when he does do it, he's going to let everybody know that, okay, my focus is here. I'm on rosters. I'm on players. I'm on team building. And that's what he means by when he's qualified uh, or ready or not when that time comes. Yeah, and here's how simple it is, Chris. Adam Gase, represented by Jimmy Sexton of CAA. Tom Condon of CAA handled Peyton Manning's football career. All all it takes is Gase saying to Sexton, hey, call Condon and find out whether or not Peyton Manning's ready to do anything. And Sexton calls Condon, and Condon calls Peyton, and Condon says, yeah, he's not ready, and that's it. So you never have to directly contact him to find out that he's not interested. The Jets have, though, directly contacted several other candidates, and the interview process is heating up. Champ Kelly from the Bears will interview in the coming days. Scott Fitterer from the Seahawks. Joe Douglas from the Eagles. Those are the three guys who have been identified as folks who will sit down and interview for the job. You know, not, not necessarily a broad swath of candidates. And remember, Christopher Johnson, the CEO of the team, said he wants a great strategic thinker. It's not necessarily a talent evaluator. And and I don't know who the best candidate out there is right now, but I really do feel like they have a narrow universe of people they're going to look at because ultimately they want someone who will be able to work with Adam Gase, who isn't going to come through the door with an agenda of getting his own coach, whether it's this year, next year, the year after. You want someone who's going to be joined at the hip with Gase, and they're going to move forward and do everything they can to win. And and now they they get serious about that process of going through the interview. Yeah, and, and I think the best thing, and you know, if you're a Jets fan or you know anybody rooting for the Jets out there, they got the pick of the litter. You know, hey, this is these are guys that these are the hot commodities a year before they're going to be the hot commodities. So, you know, everyone who wanted to bag on the Jets for the bad timing of the McCagnan fire. Here we go. The Jets have the pick of the litter out of all the people that want to be GMs for the 2020 season. Here they can slowly vet them and figure it out the way they want to do. So, hmm, maybe it wasn't that dumb after all to not have to compete to talk about this the GM search. But either way, these are three guys that I hear about in the NFL constantly. They are towards the top of the list as far as cream of the crop is concerned, guys to be future GMs. I know I've talked about Champ Kelly. Mike I'm a huge Champ Kelly fan from the Chicago Bears I was with him in Denver Broncos I've had a lot of long football conversations with him over the years Uh, I've always liked you know his eye for talent team building Joe Douglas certainly has an impressive resume when you talk about Baltimore Ravens being there his year with the Chicago Bears 
Bears, the draft they had, and then helping build the Philadelphia Eagles to what they are now. That's a pretty strong resume there in itself. And I've heard a lot about Scott Fitterer, but I just don't know anything personally about the guys. So either way, it looks good for the Jets, and it sounds like they're going to get a guy that's extremely qualified for the position. But it's not going to be the best qualified person in a vacuum. It's going to be, I believe, the best qualified person who will work with Gase, who will accept Gase as the coach. Because if you just get the best person for the job without regard to that interview or that to that relationship with Gase, you're going to potentially have even more dysfunction because that GM is going to want his own coach. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.